From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name shall be great among the nations, and in every place incense shall be offered to my name, and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Good morning, and welcome to the service of morning prayer from the chapel at Trinity Episcopal Church in Southport, Connecticut. My name is Rob Lawton, and I'm the Associate for Youth and Family Ministries here. And wherever you may be joining us from this morning, we are so glad to have you here with us for the service of morning prayer. Today, the church remembers Andre Rublev, a monk and iconographer from the 15th century. Generally acknowledged as Russia's greatest iconographer, Andre Rublev was born around 15, or 1365 near Moscow. While very young, he entered the monastery of the Holy Trinity, and in 1405, with the blessing of his igumen, the Orthodox equivalent of abbot, he transferred to the Spaso Andronikov Monastery, where he received the tonsure and studied iconography with Theophanes the Greek and the monk Daniel. Among his most revered works are those in the Dormition Cathedral in Vladimir, a city east of Moscow. The icon, or image in Greek, is central to Orthodox spirituality. It finds its place in liturgy and in personal devotion. An icon is two-dimensional. Despite being an image of someone, it is not a physical portrait. Western art, especially since the Renaissance, has sought to represent figures or events so that the viewer might better imagine them. A Western crucifix seeks to enable, uh, enable us to imagine what Golgotha was like. Icons seek to provide immediate access to the spiritual and the divine unmediated by the human historical imagination. Rublev was trained in the spiritual discipline of iconography. Writing an icon involved the ritual of preparing the surface, applying the painted and precious metal background, and then creating the image, first outlining it in red. Throughout, he would repeatedly say the Jesus prayer, which is, Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. He was creating a window into the divine, which he knew was always before him, but which was invisible to the human eye. He knew he was able to create such an image of God because he himself was made in the image of God. His object was to be totally focused on receiving God's love and loving in return. Rublev is best known for his icon of the Holy Trinity, based on the story of the three visitors of Abraham in Genesis 18. He died peacefully in 1430. In 1551, the Council of 100 Chapters decreed that all icons in the Russian church were to be drawn from the models provided by ancient Greek icon writers and Rublev. As Jesus was the icon of God, so each one of us is also. Ascetic practice aims at freeing that image from sinful distraction and claiming it more and more. To venerate an icon is to find some of the ineffable beauty that is God, that is manifest in Christ and the saints, and is also in each one of us. Andrei Rublev, monk and iconographer, 1430. If you'd like to follow along with the service, it can be found in your prayer book on page 79. It can also be found online at bcponline.org. On the left-hand menu, click on Daily Office. A new menu will appear on the right, and click on Daily Morning Prayer, right to. We begin on page 79. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ 
Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. The Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 40 and 54. Psalm 40 is found on page 640. And Psalm 54 is on page 659. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a high cliff and made my footing sure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, that I can make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering, you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. And so I said, behold, I come. In the roll of the book it is written concerning me, I love to do your will, O my God. Your law is deep in my heart. I proclaimed righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. For innumerable troubles have crowded upon me. My sins have overtaken me and I cannot see. They are more in number than the hairs of my head and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them draw back and be disgraced, who take pleasure in my misfortune. Let those who say, Aha, and gloat over me be confounded, because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation continually say, Great is the Lord. Though I am poor and afflicted, the Lord will have regard for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. Do not tarry. O my God. Psalm 54 on page 659. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. 
Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye has seen the ruin of my foes. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Where is your mother's bill of divorce with which I put her away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities you were sold, and for your transgressions your mother was put away. Why, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there no one to answer? Is my hand shortened that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, by my rebuke I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a desert. Their fish stink for lack of water and die of thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness and make sackcloth their covering. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain him, sustain with a word him that is weary. Morning by morning he wakens. He wakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting, for the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let it come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Who walks in darkness and has no light, yet trusts in the name of the Lord and relies upon his God? Behold, all you who kindle a fire, who set brands alight, walk by the light of your fire and by the brands which you have kindled. This shall you have from my hand. You shall lie down in torment. Here ends the first lesson. First canticle is found on page 88, canticle 12, Song of Creation. We won't say the whole thing. We'll say the invocation, part one, the cosmic order, then going over to the next page, part three, the people of God, and then flipping the page, the doxology. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, you angels and all powers of the Lord. O heavens and all waters above the heavens, sun and moon and stars of the sky, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, every shower of rain and fall of dew, all winds and fire and heat, winter and summer, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O chill and cold, drops of dew and flakes of snow, frost and cold, ice and sleet, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the people of God glorify the Lord, praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O priests and servants of the Lord, praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous,
Praise him and highly exalt him forever. You that are holy and humble of heart, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. To give a human example, brethren, no one annuls even a man's will or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now, the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, which is Christ. This is what I mean. The law, which came 430 years afterward, does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God, so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance is by the law, it is no longer by promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made, and it was ordained by angels through an intermediary. Now, an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given which could make alive, then righteousness would indeed be by the, the law. But the scripture consigned all things to sin. That was what promise, that was, but the scripture consigned all things to sin, that what was promised to faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Here ends the second lesson. Our second canticle is found on page 92, canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 
Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Holy God, we bless you for the gift of your monk and icon writer, Andrei Rublev, who, inspired by the Holy Spirit, provided a window into heaven for generations to come, revealing the majesty and mystery of the Holy and Blessed Trinity, who lives and reigns through ages of ages. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. I now invite your prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On Trinity's prayer list, we pray for Patria and Peter Swan, Joyce Miller, Robert, Lillian, Lee, Whitney, Janet, John Rogers, Philip, and anyone else you would like to add at this time. Pray for all those who have died, remembering Nuala, and all those who have died from the coronavirus. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. A reminder that we offer morning prayer daily, Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m., live as it's happening on our Facebook page and then available a little while later on our YouTube channel. We hope that you'll join us this Sunday morning at either 8 a.m. or 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube for our celebration of the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. Whatever the rest of your Friday and your weekend looks like, I hope it's great. Please stay safe, stay healthy. God bless.